the log section of this uh, thing is right in here where I was born. It was the Sam Scott place, uh, and my father and grandfather bought it from Mr. Scott back in probably 19, 1929 or 30. I was born in Graham, Virginia, which is Bluefield, Virginia now. And when were you born? In uh, August 1915. We moved to Montgomery County in 1921. We lived on East Main Street. It used to be white, okay. but it's yellow now. I grew up during the Depression, and I don't mind at all. We were very fortunate because we lived on a farm, so we had a cow and chickens and uh, a garden. Well, I didn't really realize that it was a depression. My father always had a job and we always, not we weren't rich or anything, but we always had enough to eat. But there were a lot of people around us that were, that didn't have even enough to eat. We kind of looked after our poorer neighbors in the neighborhood. Uh, one family over here was burned out twice and mother helped uh, my mother and several of the other women in the thing that had a little more than they did. We gave them quilts and pots and pans. But I just know that they'd come to our back door and just say that they were hungry. People would go and beg for enough money to buy a loaf of bread so to feed their children. And dad, that just really did, he just talked about it. It just really distressed him. Do you remember what he said? I, I just remember that it that would upset him. And um, I, and mother mother was she said I could never turn anyone away. She'd always give them something to eat, hand it out the door to them, because she could it really, you know, it was distressing to know people were hungry. When it comes to the depression, um, I, like I say, we were we were um, we weren't sheltered, but we had no knowledge of the outside world, of all the bread lines in the big cities, of all the um, tragedies of the, <laughs> before my time, of the failure of the banks, you know, before that, that was the start of the Depression, I guess. We always, have, you know, we had chickens at our home. We never had a cow or pigs or anything like that, but a lot of people around us did. They were loud in town then. But uh, we did have a chicken, chicken house and chickens. I really thought, didn't think much about that. We didn't have a, none of, no children had a lot of clothes like they have today. But of course, mm -hmm. some of them were, had, some of them really had a struggle. I don't remember that your children didn't have shoes. Mm -hmm. But of course, they maybe, they'd have two or three dresses, and, or maybe one, mm -hmm. one or two skirts. They wouldn't, they didn't have a lot of clothes. Uh -huh. But they kept it clean. And, they seemed to get along all right. They had these camps, they were called CCC camps, and uh, Civilian Conservation Corps camps. Oh, yeah. Uncle Rod, uh, Dad's younger brother, he was hired to, at the old Yellow Sulphur Springs to help, um, um, I won't say control, to help train the CCC boys that helped build that rock wall coming out of Christiansburg, there where Dr. Stanton's house was. That was a CCC project. To, to sustain the, the heavy banks. And he um, helped train those boys, I don't know exactly how, how much training they needed to supervise the work that they did, the projects they did, uh, fixing the uh, Appalachian Trail, fixing the uh, uh, cabins at the state parks. I don't remember what all their projects were, but uh, Uncle Rod was involved with that. I remember my mother, uh, uh, there were people that lived over in the Johnson Heights, that was that section over in front of where we lived. Mm -hmm. They were so poor that my mother went over there to get a, one of the ladies to come and help her work for her. Mm -hmm. And she said the little children were eating canned blackberries for, for breakfast. They just, that's all they had to eat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the little children, those little children, were, my mother had a flower garden and she was, we had a lot of little, the boys, the pretty good size, help her, but I think they paid them about 10 cents an hour. And they were tickled to get fast. And they were always coming to the door, our door selling blackberries or something that they'd gone and picked, you know, just to get a little bit of money. Mm -hmm. Well, one thing at that time, of course, there was no, uh, nobody had Social Security or 
There was no unemployment. Uh, no, they really just had no way of getting any money. I do remember that uh, when we were going to children's school, uh, the WPA furnished uh, um, surplus food to some of the small rural schools. We had peanut butter, we had uh, pinto beans, we had cornmeal, um, bread, sliced bread, uh, and occasionally jam or something to put on the bread. But we had a Miss Beckner that came up there in a little old gas stove back in the corner of the big room, and uh, she would fix, uh, cook meals for us and make cornbread. And uh, that's about the only thing that I was touched by one of the programs. Uh, they didn't have places for them. Oh, like Wheatland and places, you know, people could have, of course they wouldn't have had money to have gone anyway. But they just took care of their families at home. Well, I know Social Security, they started Social Security, I think in the late 30s, didn't they? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I was still fairly young, you know, I mean, I, I just never, our family always had an income. Mm -hmm. I never knew enough, of, you know, to really be destitute in uh -huh. any way. But uh, of course there were a lot of people that were. But I do remember that mother had to use our ration stamps to get sugar, uh, to make, to can things with. Rubber was not available and some of uh, the uh, home demonstration and VPI encouraged people to freeze things rather than try to can them because uh, rubber for sealing things was not available and um, it was easier to buy little plastic cardboards and things and put them in a deep freeze or something. And we had, we had big gardens. I know that we froze a lot of corn, beans, uh, a lot of applesauce, frozen apples, and uh, stuff that I didn't like, broccoli. And they rationed uh, food, they rationed, they had uh, ration books for meat, they had ration books for canned goods, they had stamps for sugar, they had stamps for shoes, and they would come to the ration board and apply for uh, extra stamps, you know. For, uh, it was right, it, we had some right funny experiences. We'd get letters from people saying that the grandpa, somebody was getting ready to die and the ch children didn't have shoes to wear and they needed stamps even before they died. <laughs> and then during the canning season, they would apply for extra sugar stamps. And you, you know, they had to go through right much red tape to get extra stamps. And we were rationed with tires. Uh, my father was a farmer, so he had a uh, a little bit more precedence for getting tires for his tractor, but we were still the horse, the harness horses and everything. And gas. Oh, people almost fought for gas, you know, things to get, they'd come in and fill out all, have a lot of filling out because of having so far to ride, drive to work to get extra stank, extra gas, you know. The only thing that was in short supply for, uh, for people around here, including the farmers, was gasoline to run any kind of vehicles they had, and not many of them had vehicles. It was during the war years that, that we uh, finally got our first tractor, and we ground our own feed out here with a big belt on the hammer mill going into the granary there. Never thought about it not being safe. It was, and I was, yeah, I was probably about 15 or something when we used to walk out there. But we usually had a ride. But if we didn't, we'd walk, or we'd walk back home. Mother never worried about us. All she did was just turn us loose like a creek or a branch out there like that lake is. She'd just look out there once in a while, and we were out there building little dams and catching tadpoles and minnows and everything. You never worried about where your children were or what they were doing. We'd, I just didn't think about us being, it being real hard times. I, I just, I guess I just, it was just my way of life, you know.